Welcome to this introduction to the Program Risk Review Tool, part of the Risk Assessment Toolkit offered by the University of California Office of the President, Office of Risk Services. The UCOP Office of Risk Services offers several of these Excel-based workbooks to meet a diverse set of risk assessment needs across the UC system. Each of these tools has been constructed to provide insight from multiple perspectives. For a complete list of the tools available in the toolkit, refer to the ERM website. This webinar is focused on the Program Risk Review Tool. This tool will help you consider six different types of objectives and risks. Those six types are strategic, financial, compliance, operational, reputational, and reporting. Now these apply to your organization, your program, or an initiative, and the risks associated with these objectives are also considered. Your program may not necessarily have objectives in all of these areas. For instance, not all programs will have compliance objectives, but each category should be at least considered. It's important to understand that this tool is designed to help you make better, more risk-aware decisions, but it will not tell you what the right answer is. These tools function to support a methodical thought process that can be consistently applied to, a th to thoroughly evaluate various risks, enabling the user to make better informed decisions. Now, the nature of doing a risk assessment is highly subjective and only provides a user's perception of risks and related impacts. This is why it's important to also evaluate correlating data along with the risk assessment whenever possible to validate your assumptions. Inaccurate data or other information not provided by the user will naturally affect any results, decisions, or recommendations. And final decisions should be made independently by each organization using this tool. So, with that in mind, let's walk you through the Program Risk Review tool and show you how you can use it. We'll start at the introduction by filling in some basic information about who's using the tool in these white cells here. And then we'll save it with a unique name in a location we can remember for later. One more note before we get too far along here. When you open the file, you may get a warning about macros or security, like this one up here. Please don't be alarmed by this. It's because this file has a macro to allow the data you enter to be exported into a flat, comma-separated value file. Now, essentially, if you're planning on using this data um, here in the UC's Enterprise Risk Management Information System, also known as ERMIS, you want to enable the macros. But the tool will still work fully if you decide not to enable the macros. Of course, please make sure that you're adhering to any IT security policies your organization has. In some cases, your computer security settings may prevent you from enabling the macro altogether. In these cases, if you wish to use the macro, you'll need to work with your own system administrator to alter your computer security settings. Okay, I'll enable this content here. Click OK. Let's get started. After we've read the introduction, there's a Get Started button down at the bottom. To start off, we'll need to set some common parameters so we understand what the different terms mean when we use them in this tool. Let's start with the weighting up here in the top right corner. Depending on the types of risk we're considering, our weights for risk impact and likelihood might change. For instance, if we're using this tool to consider risks that could cause workers' compensation claims, we're probably going to weight likelihood higher because there are statutory limits to how severe most claims will be. So the biggest thing impacting our objectives is probably going to be how many claims occur rather than how severe they are. However, if we're considering risks related to our organization's professional liability instead, we might weight impact higher because severe incidents are likely to impair our ability to achieve our objectives even in small numbers. For this demonstration, we have a wide variety of risks we're considering, so we're weighting likelihood and impact evenly at 50% apiece. Now, 
Let's consider these other definitions. Scale matters here, and so do your organization's risk appetite and the types of risk you're considering. So, risk impact, risk likelihood, and control effectiveness all have a set of scales and definitions associated with those scales. There's <clears throat> you can leave these preset scales as they are or modify them to suit your needs by simply overriding them. Now, for instance, if we want to change the term very low under risk impact to negligible, we could do it. We could do so here simply by typing negligible over where very low used to appear there. So then the drop-down menus in later pages would use this set of terms now modified. I'm going to change this back to very low just so we keep this consistent and because we have data entered later on in this demonstration already. So once we've decided on the weighting and scales we're using, we move on through the steps where we describe the organization's objectives and assess the risks which might keep the organization from achieving them. Every page in the tool has a set of buttons down the left-hand side. See these right here. We'll use these to move between the various steps. You'll also notice that some cells <clears throat> are shaded in gray and others are white, such as these blank ones up here or even these with text in them up here. These here are white. The gray cells either have formulas in them or the formatting in, in them should prevent you from making accidental changes to the tools. Unshaded cells can be edited as you see fit, as we just showed you with the scales here. That also applies to later on when cells are unshaded or shaded. So let's move on to the next step. That's describing our objectives. We'll use the spaces on this page to describe the strategic, financial, compliance, operational, reputational, and reporting objectives of your organization as a whole or for any specific initiative. Each set of objectives appears at the top of the assessment page for the corresponding types of risk later on. Let's move on to the next steps where we're going, <clears throat> where we're going to consider the types of risks. For steps two through seven, each page is laid out in the same way. This is on step two, strategic risks. Again, every other of these steps here for strategic, financial, operational, compliance, reputational, and reporting, each page is laid out the same way. We have our objectives at the top, followed by a variety of ways to assess the risks to those objectives. If you'd like to make changes to the set of objectives, that's if you want to make changes up here, return to the Describe Objectives page, that's step one, using the button on each page and make the changes and then jump back to whichever step you were on. So let's go through the assessment process for strategic objectives as an example. Now keep in mind this pro process works the same way for each other set of objectives. First, we list in the leftmost column each, <clears throat> each risk that we can associate with our strategic objectives. We have budget impairment here as one risk to our strategic objectives, um, ineffective auxiliary management, uh, insufficient oversight of third-party vendors, and each of these has been typed in by us as we go through here. So if we wanted to add more, we have spaces down here to add more. If you wanted to make edits to these, we can make edits to them. When you receive your tool as, uh, as a user interested in actually using the tool, all of these spaces here will be blank and be up to you to define which risks you've identified for your organization. Then we'll click the next columns over. And each of these has a drop-down menu. So we'll actually select in the drop-down menu which option we'd like 
to associate with the impact of budget impairment, for instance. Um, so we right now it says low, the impact is low. We can change that to moderate, change it to high, simply using the drop-down menu. We also do the same for risk likelihood. We can change that to low or moderate. <clears throat> Next, we're going to describe the risk management activities and mitigation activities prescribed by management. These are things that you're already doing. These are your controls. The fields in this column can have any text in them that you want. Okay, so it's free-form text. Then, we're going to identify how frequently the controls are performed. For example, an audit might be performed annually but training may be provided quarterly. Um, so for instance, here we have external financing program, budget officers. This, this sort of meeting might occur semi-annually. Um, however, uh, the operational excellence programs, these other types of controls, these are probably constructed on an ad hoc basis. Okay. Next, we're going to estimate how effective these controls are based on how they affect the potential impact and likelihood of the risk. So if we have a lot of control over budget impairment, that's what this top one is, remember, uh, then we can, if, if our controls are very effective in reducing the impact and likelihood of this risk to our organization, um, then we'll click nearly complete, which is the highest uh, control effectiveness that exists in this scale. Now, if they're a bit less effective, then we can choose moderate, or we can choose one of these other scales. Next, under dashboard, we, we actually call tools used to monitor risks, or reports and dashboards. We can describe the, how the controls, control activities are being monitored, and then next to that, identify the person in your organization who's accountable for monitoring those controls. Uh, this allows us to put these down in documentation, um, and also when we're assessing the effectiveness, we understand how we're measuring that effectiveness. So, if you want to change the options shown on the menus for risk impact or risk likelihood or control effectiveness, you can change them by clicking Customize Scales at the bottom left-hand corner of the page here. So you see this here under our other buttons for moving around to other other pieces of, of this tool. We have customized scales down at the bottom of that. If we click that, it takes us back to that first page that we moved to after the introduction. And each of these here, we can make changes to. Okay. Now, the version of the tool in the Risk Assessment Toolkit website has each of these other types of objectives and risks completed with examples. But this demonstration won't cover them, um, as the process is more or less identical to what we've just described here in the strategic objectives session, section. So once we've completed the steps associated with all the appropriate risk types, because remember, not all of our uh, risk types will necessarily be associated with the program or organization that we're assessing here. But once we've completed the various steps that we're interested in completing, then in our navigation here, uh, we can click over to Ratings and Summary. Now, many of the cells on this page are unshaded, but there's really nothing to modify in this page. The report summarizes the entries that we've made in all the previous pages and calculates a rating under Risk Rating in the far left column. You see this here. A risk rating shows for each risk uh, as one of the following. Um, if it's potentially over-controlled, it shows yellow. Uh, what that means is that management should review these risks uh, to de determine if controls need to be modified and make changes as appropriate. Um, that also goes for others that are yellow, uh, that are potentially poorly controlled, as we can see here with this closure of confidential information in this example. Um, and again, in this case, we should be having management review these risks and determine if there's modifications to be made. 
when a risk, show, risk rating shows as green, as it does with ineffective auxiliary management as a risk, then we can say that no immediate action is required. We would simply monitor this one here. Um, and finally, if, some, if one of these risks shows as red, for instance, the obsolescence of systems and technology in this example, um, then that's saying that it's poorly controlled. And these risks should, of course, receive immediate attention. Now, this page also describes the, uh, what you've entered before under uh, objectives. It also has uh, the risks listed, as we've discussed already. Uh, it includes the controls that we're using, the tools that we're using to monitor those, and it also has the accountability under responsible person or department. So again, if we want to make changes to this, we can skip back to, for instance, if I identify, and we scroll down here and see that our other objectives are listed here for financial, for operational, again, with the sample information that we've put in for this demonstration. Each time we go through this here, if we decide that we want to make a change, for instance, if I wanted to call this, uh, pen, if I wanted to change under operational risks, pandemic, if I wanted to change that to pandemic flu, to be more specific, for instance, uh, then I'd want to go back up to my step four, where that operational risk is associated, back here to pandemic. Change this to pandemic flu. Then when I go back to ratings and summary, we scroll down, we'll see that that change has been carried forward. So when we've completed all of these steps, we can export the data into a comma-separated value file, also known as a CSV. Uh, and we can use this in the university's Enterprise Risk Management Information System or any other uh, database management system that your organization is using. Uh, we just simply do that by clicking the Export button here. Next, let's take a look at the chart for this tool. Now, the chart combines all of the scores for the risks associated with each set of objectives. Risk likelihood is shown on the horizontal axis. Risk impact is shown on the vertical. Each bubble's size increases with the number of risks identified for that set of objectives. So we can see that reporting only has uh, relatively fewer uh, risks identified for it than strategic. That's the teal bubble uh, compared to the blue one. Uh, again, this uh, chart here is unlocked, so you should be able to move labels around as you see fit, um, but it is designed to uh, be easy to read. Uh, as long as you can move those labels around, you'll be able to, to see, and that's also what the key on the left hand on, on the uh, right-hand side is for. So we've covered each of the steps, or at least how to complete these steps, how to put in your objectives. Um, and also how to interpret the ratings and summary page and the chart. So uh, this concludes our demonstration of the program, sorry, the program risk review tool. Uh, please remember that the results of any risk management decision will only be as effective as the accuracy of the data provided by the user. Like others in the Risk Assessment Toolkit, this tool is just a tool. It helps users analyze their objectives, their risks, their controls, uh, but it doesn't provide answers. Now, questions or comments about this tool can be directed to the ERM Help Desk at erm at ucop.edu. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Please stand by.